A Cricket Sang and Set the Sun by Blake Tyson. So it'll be interesting to see John's performance compared to none other than Blake Tyson himself. You can see in John's video, the microphone placement is totally whack, no offense. <laughs> so obviously Blake's the composer, so full respect to that. But I actually like John's version better. But at the same time, it's not supposed to be a very like, <laughs> like it's supposed to be like opera or something. If you don't have any good ideas about musicality, about touch, sensitivity, your phrasing is whack, then your chorale will also be whack. <laughs> this is where everything gets exposed. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. It's time for yet another Let's Watch Student vs. Professional. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Will Flinner, Marimba Maurice, Ryan Carlisle, Sunshine Hart, Scott Raider, Greg Harris, Dean P. Newberger, and Bradley Crowley. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Arn. Thank you so much for your continued support. If you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well, hope you've been staying safe. Today, we're going to be watching two performances, one performed by a student and one performed by a professional. But if you're new to my channel, my name's Adam and I make videos about percussion on this channel every single week. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads and hit that notification bell to know whenever I upload a new episode. Anyway, on this segment, we've watched some amazing videos that were submitted by you guys at adamtanpercussion.com forward slash submit. That's where you can submit your videos if you have anything you'd like to be featured on the show. And today's video is no exception. It's from John Waller and it is a cricket sang and set the sun by Blake Tyson. Now I know this is a piece that a lot of you guys would know and I'm really excited to look at this because I haven't really explored this piece that much but I know it's quite famous. Hey Adam, I've been a huge fan of you for a while now. I've only been playing marimba for four years and four mallet for only about two or three. I think I've come a long way in that time and would really appreciate any advice that you could give. I performed this as part of the Contemporary Music Festival at Merkin Hall in New York City earlier this year. New York! Thanks so much for submitting this, John, because I really like it when people don't proclaim themselves to be professionals, although I think four years is a pretty decent time to be learning marimba. That being said, we have featured a lot of mallet flexes. on this channel that have come from absolute beasts of players with years and years of experience. So it'll be interesting to see John's performance compared to none other than Blake Tyson himself. Now, if you have the score at home, you can feel free to follow along with this video. We're gonna go through each section one by one. We're gonna compare what each player does. And I'm assuming that it's going to be quite close given that this is actually more of a permutation type piece. We don't have any surprises in this piece. That's not necessarily a bad thing, I think what makes pieces like this really exciting is when people take it to another level. Okay, so I've gone ahead and divided the video into phrases for both videos. So we're going to see John's version of a phrase followed by Blake's version of a phrase over and over and over again until we reach the end. Yeah, we can see here that John is playing in an actual live performance. It's legitimate. There is an audience present and we can see that this marimba is a four and a third octave marimba. It's, I think the Adams Sol, I think they call it Solist in Europe. I think I had the mini version of this on my channel in my video about the cheapest marimba ever. And this is definitely going to be interesting. I've never found these marimbas to sound particularly resonant. John's mallets look like Nanai Memoris, Encore mallets Nanai Memoris. Uh, he looks like he's using Steven's grip and he looks like he's taped the mallets very far up the shaft. That's very nice to see. You can never have enough tape. And by the way, I will be pausing the video at certain points to make comments about it. So if you want to watch the entire video without my commentary first, I have the links to both videos in the description below. And yeah, I guess we should just get started. So let's watch. Hmm. I like that lift that he's doing. Good spacing. Okay, now let's check out Blake's version in the recording. Okay. So Blake actually does something quite similar. Similar spacing, similar phrasing. Blake doesn't really lift the mallets much though. 
When we go back and we look at John's lifting, you can see that John lifts the mallets quite high, quite early on. Now this is personal interpretation. I think it doesn't really matter so much. We're only just at the beginning, but a good thing to note is that when we watch Blake's version, he doesn't lift the mallets that high. So he only lifts it a little bit here and there because it's a little phrase. And I think it's not marked that loud. Yeah, it's marked piano. I'm being super picky when I say this, but maybe John can consider having slightly smaller lifts first, just keeping it nice and small. I think physical space is a very important thing when you're playing marimba on stage. People pay attention to these moves more than you think. There's tons of research about this on percussive notes and stuff if you want to check that out. Not too big of a deal at the moment. Okay, let's keep going. Really nice. Yeah, he's bringing that top line out really well and really controlled. Really steady, nice little slowdown. Great, beautiful. Blake's doing something more similar. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there for a second. I find it really interesting that actually Blake has less differentiation between the voicing. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like he's playing all the voices almost the same. It's like do 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 do. Whereas I feel like John's version is like dum da dum da dum da dum da dum dum. So obviously Blake's the composer, so full respect to that. But I actually like John's version better. I actually like the top voicing that he's putting in there. It sounds really clean and really clear. Although if we go back to John's version real quick. He does switch around the voicing, so do 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 do. So I'm not I'm not so sure. Maybe it's intentional. Maybe it's just the recording. But yeah, I just feel like there's more differentiation in the voices. I also feel like John's mallets are graded a little bit better than Blake's. Blake's mallets all kind of sound like the same hardness. I think it's too early to make any judgment calls about the tone right now because it's literally like. The first page but um, I will say John did a very good job of taking the instruction with forward motion in bar 9 seriously he pushed the tempo but he didn't make it sound rushed I really like that all right let's keep watching so you can see in Blake's version you hear how all the voicing is quite even there isn't really like a bass and a treble But I like that he's not rebuttering too much too. Now there, there was clear voicing. So go back here, go, go back a bit. But here there's clear voicing. That's... That's nice. But otherwise, they're more or less the same, the left and the right hand. This is really nice pacing. Okay, stop there for a second. The pacing is beautiful, but I'm hearing a lot of attack sound from the mallets. I don't know whether it's the mallets or whether it's the stroke that's making it sound very ticka 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 ticka. Uh, we're hearing a lot of that core sound. So, like I said before, maybe one grade down would make it sound a little bit more floaty and, and mesmerizing, uh, but his pacing is excellent.
more separation of voices. It's good. I can I can hear more voicing in this. Oh, that's nice. Great crescendos. Oh, that was a nice. Good slowdown. Not excessive. He's doing a great job of bringing out those melodic lines. Great job. Great dynamics. Fantastic. That's really fantastic. Now, let's listen to Blake's version. See, Blake's version sounds less attacky. Sounds warmer. Might have something to do with the sound editing. But yeah, I hear less attack sound, which is good. Interesting, interesting that Blake doesn't have as much dynamic contrast, although I think it's because the recording is compressed, maybe? Okay, we can hear the dim over here though. I mean, I can't really say that either rendition is better or worse, but again, I think the main thing is that I can hear more voicing in John's version, and in Blake's version, I hear a more straight, equal treatment to all voices, except for when there's those scaling runs. All of those runs are being brought out really beautifully. We have many factors at play here, including compression of recordings, including better microphone placement. Like you can see in John's video, the microphone placement is totally whack, no offense. <laughs> it's so far away from the instrument. I'm guessing they had to set up one microphone setup for a whole bunch of different performances. Fair enough, but yeah, it does no favors for John's sound, unfortunately. It's a shame. I would have liked to have a better mic setup for John. I feel like he deserves it. But that's okay, we will do the best we can. One thing I have to say about John's playing actually is that he has no note mistakes yet. The accuracy is literally perfect. <laughs> like when a piece is like this where it's open and tonal and all the chords are quite predictable and everyone knows what the next note should be, the pressure is a lot higher, I think. <laughs> if you make a wrong note, everyone can hear. I'm really liking this. Let's keep watching. That's a really great slowdown, very organic sounding. Softer, softer, louder. Great, that was some good dynamic control, although I think he did lose the build up in bar 78. Bar 78, there is a four bar, sorry, two bar crescendo up to fortissimo, and I think he got too loud too early. Uh, again, this might be the recording, but this whole section here from 64 down to 78, is all getting gradually louder. And to give away the build up too early means you have nowhere to go. That's I think just more to do with score memorization and just caring about these details. Like I've said in previous videos, when you go to things like competitions and high level juries, they always care about small things like this. I really like his rubato. I really like that he used the Poco rubato rule well. He didn't put too much. It didn't sound artificial. It sounded very organic like. Listen to that. That's so organic. Go back again. See, those pulls, just very nice. And it just sort of cascades down. But I think it's just beautiful. Now this is supposed to be a build up, but it seems like he's getting loud already. It's not, it's not that loud yet. Yeah. This is supposed to be going up to fortissimo. 
This is supposed to be for this one. And also, when he's going down in the scales, da 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 da, would be nice if they have equal weight in both hands. I know that maybe they're different harnesses. This is why when you pick harnesses for mallets, and you know that the piece is going to have a lot of scalic runs, make sure the two middle ones are the same. Otherwise, you hear this taku 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 taku. I'll show you what I mean. So if I go back a little bit one more time. Alright, listen to this. Da -da 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 -da. Right, so we're hearing a lot of that right hand hardness, and it doesn't sound like da 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 da. It's supposed to be a linear scale. So small details. These are really really small details, but I think that would make the, this section feel a lot less uh, repetitive. Let's keep watching. Yeah, I don't know if the slowdown there is necessary, but. Maybe that's his personal interpretation to introduce the new key change. Uh, it would have been nice if he just went straight into it. But anyway, that's fine. Let's listen to Blake's version. I like his rubato too. He's going up and down as well. adding more energy to it. Okay, so you can hear that Blake didn't slow down. He just went all the way towards that B flat and he seems to be getting quicker and quicker throughout, which I think is more accurate of the description in bar 68. It says moving forward. So I assume that's like a string stringendo. That's sort of adding some excitement to it and making it feel like it's pressing onwards. Uh, we didn't get that feel with John's. It felt like it was kind of the same tempo. And I didn't realize this until I listened to Blake's version that when you really push the tempo, it becomes a lot more exciting. Blake's dynamics were more accurate. I felt like his build up was a little bit more appropriate. And when he gets to this section that we're about to get into, it's like a nice big new thing. So I think John is doing a really great job regardless. I think it's great for public performance. But if John was entering something like a competition where there were heaps of people playing similar level pieces or even better level pieces and they were all just as good as him, he would need to really pay attention to details like these dynamics. He would have judges that would say things like why didn't he move the tempo forward when it said moving forward. Anyway, let's move on to the B flat section now with John first. Great voicing. He's following the voicing perfectly. There is actually marked voicing in this section. Great drop down. Interesting writ there. There is actually a marked writ, so he's correct, but actually I think he started it too early. I think two bars before it was supposed to start. It happens in bar 98, but he was already doing it in bar 96. You can see that he's not rushing at all and he's not, he's not having unnecessary slowdowns. So the writ hasn't started yet. It still hasn't started yet. It's not supposed to start yet, but he's already ridding. It starts here. Yeah. Small detail again, but I think it makes all the difference. Now Blake's version is a lot faster. <laughs> Beautiful voicing. So yeah, now Blake is putting in those top voices. Ah, yes. So you can hear that Blake did a more deliberate writ. Yes, he did have a very slight slowdown the four bars before the writ, but when the writ came up, he was very sure to say, this is definitely a writ. And you can see by his spacing of the notes. I'll show you, have a listen to this again. He's already slowing down a little bit here. And then this is where the writ is. Yeah, that kind of split note, dun, 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 dun. And make a really nice, obvious writ effect. And it's more special than just having like a very, very gradual slowdown all the time. I really have nothing to say about this section for both players other than that writ thing. I think it's done really well. Good tempo. 
I can hear that top voice really nice with John's version. Dum 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 dum. Oh oh. Okay, some wrong notes. But sounds great. Ah, that mallet is too hard. That mallet's too hard. Okay, hold on a second before we see the comparison. John is going a little bit too ham on those left hand notes. Do, 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 do. It's actually just marked as forte, right? Just forte. Yeah, it's just forte, but it sounds very similar to the fortissimo we had before, which is, again, very small details here. But if you make it too loud all the time, then it really loses the extremes. Like you want to have sections where the extreme is very obvious. If it's marked fortissimo, which it is, like once, I think, in this entire piece, that is the extreme. That's the part where it's going to be big. When in doubt with this piece, I think go softer just because it's not supposed to be a flex piece. It's not supposed to be intense. It's supposed to be light. It's supposed to be a cricket singing after setting the sun. Otherwise, I think he did a really good job. We'll forget about the wrong notes. Like overall, it's quite well prepared. So this section, I feel like it can be softer. This is good. That's too hard. That's too hard. That was good. That was a good amount. And it says slowing here. That was good. That was a good slowdown. It does actually say molto rich in that bar, so you can probably do even more than that. Again, like we were talking about with extremes, make sure there is a difference between rich, molto rich, poco rich. All of these should be different. They should not all have the same roadmap of slowing down. And I'll be interested to see how Blake does this. So let's have a listen. Notice how Blake is tilting the mallet slightly at the beginning? And then he, yeah, and now he's back to normal to get that softer tone. So this is forte. This is supposed to be forte. But you see, it's not too loud. It's really nice. Here's the molto writ. It's coming up. Okay, so there we can see the molto writ is obviously a lot more writ than the writ that we heard before. I really like that he didn't go too loud because you don't want this section of the piece to be louder than the climax or equal to the climax. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, let's keep watching. We're uh, just about to reach the end. So this is a chorale section. Like anybody can play really virtuosic, difficult pieces and have them sound somewhat good. But when it comes to playing a chorale, if you don't have any good ideas about musicality, about touch, sensitivity, your phrasing is whack, then your chorale will also be whack. <laughs> this is where everything gets exposed. And I'm really interested to see how these guys approach it. So let's start with John. John is rolling very slowly. He could roll a little bit faster. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. When you have chorales, or even just in a non-marimba setting, what is a chorale? It's usually when you have a choir singing and you need something to sustain the voice. Now on marimba, we have a little bit of decay and we have a little bit of sustain on our sounds. But at the end of the day, it still is just do, 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 right? And your job is to make it sound like wah. So in order to do that, you need to roll more so that the sound carries on. I feel like with this, very slow roll. I think he's rolling in eighth note triplets. He's just going It's a little bit too slow for that, in my opinion. I think it should be like Otherwise, there's gaps in the release of each note and we don't get that nice sustained feeling. So I'm going to start again. He's also going too fast. It's only 70. 
more, more, more. It needs more roll speed. Good. And also, it's piano in this section, but he's doing what I used to do when I first learned the crowd, which is swelling every single note. He's going, uh, 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 <laughs> which is, I mean, it's okay, but it's not what's written there. It's supposed to be all soft. So again, in order to do that, you could tilt the mallets up, roll a little bit faster to get the sound moving. But actually, there's a lot that you can do with this that will make it sound a little bit more nice. But anyway, let's keep listening and see how he goes. So especially when you get to louder sections, so is the roll speed is too slow. Okay, so that's the first line of the crawl, and you can hear we don't really get much articulation because it's all dagger, 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 dagger. It just sounds like notated eighth note triplets. So yeah, we'll keep watching for now, but John, if you're watching, I would highly recommend working on your chorale rolls. Just get them a lot faster and fill the space with more marimba sound. Otherwise, it just sounds really empty. The other thing that he can do, actually he is doing it, he's moving his left hand first instead of his right hand first. Yeah, so he's joining it together well, but just needs more rolls. And we're moving through this section very quickly, even though it's only 70. The roll's too slow. The, the roll is too slow. It's like dagger, 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 dagger. So just listen to this last one again. It's a long note. It's worth six full crotchets in six four. Dagger, 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 dagger. It's quite long, isn't it? I'm not sure that the note lengths are correct. So we're counting crotchet triplets. Uh, quaver triplets. Sorry. Dagger, 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 two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, five and uh, six. And it's not finished yet. It's not finished yet. So he stopped the roll. <laughs> I like that he rests the mallets on the river, but he stopped the roll way too early. This is supposed to be just this nice long note that just finishes off the piece. And then it's done. But he's just ending it too early and the triplet thing is just making it sound way too metric. Chorales should not be mechanical sounding. They should sound very organic and very arrhythmical. So if you imagine someone singing, they do not sing like ah, 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 ah. It doesn't really sound right. So I would suggest when you're doing a chorale section like this, roll more arrhythmically. Don't think about how many rolls you're doing. In my opinion, it also makes it just easier to think about because then you start thinking about the big notes as opposed to how many rolls you can fit in each note. I think this chorale section is probably the one that needs the most work if you are ever doing this again, John. But just for anyone else who's watching, don't underestimate the chorales. <laughs> of course, of course. He still did a really good job. He still did a very, very good job. Okay, let's have a look at Blake's version. Okay, straight away you can see Blake is rolling a lot quicker. And A rhythmically, he's not counting the rolls. And he's stretching it out, he's stretching it out. Yeah, he's not counting the rolls. It's completely a really cool. Uh, and he sped it up, see? Change the speed, because it's he's closing it up into soft. And here it's faster. And he speeds it up, yep. So he's playing with, with the length to give it some articulation. Now he's rolling faster. And he's tilting the mallets so that he can roll faster, easier, and get a softer sound. He speeds it up. Here's the last note. Oh, doing a ripple roll, okay. But you can see, you can hear that, right? That, that low hum. And he's still going, he's still going. 
and then he stops. Okay, to be honest, I'd probably roll even more than that just to fill the gaps. I think you could be even more expressive with this. But at the same time, it's not supposed to be a very like, like it's supposed to be like opera or something. But I think Blake really captured it most importantly towards the end. You can see he speeds up the ones with the octaves and he speeds up and slows down, pulls it in, pulls it out to get different articulations. And then when he gets to that last note, it definitely lasts for six full beats. It definitely has a very nice, soft roll sound that just continues throughout. It doesn't stop. It doesn't have any like digga, 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 digga feel. It's like beautiful. And yeah, he even did the ripple roll. That's like advanced technique. He did like a one-handed roll on his right hand and a normal roll on his left hand. This is Really nice stuff from Blake. So before I give my final verdict about these performances and my final comments, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave down in the comments below any comments you have about either performance or what I said about either performance. I'd love to hear from you. Let's start off with Blake's performance. Now, obviously he's the composer of the piece, but we're gonna treat it as though someone else wrote the piece, just out of fairness to John. And I will say that Blake's performance was very musical. He covered all of the dynamics perfectly. He definitely had more attention to detail, especially when it came to the rolls, especially when it came to the crescendos, to the speeding up. So I'm gonna be giving Blake a nine out of 10. Now, why wouldn't I give him a 10 out of 10? Because I want to be fair to John, mainly. <laughs> but also, because I think his voicing, the way that he plays all of the voices almost equal, is interesting. But I also think that the roles towards the end, they could have been a little bit more. But Blake, if you're watching this, your piece is beautiful and I really liked your playing very much. Now let's look at John's version. So John did a lot of things very, very well. Firstly, his notes were learned very well. I didn't feel like he was hesitating at any point. I really enjoyed his sound, especially in the A sections with that voicing that I was just talking about. I like John's voicing a little bit more than Blake's. And also that marimba and that recording setup did him no favors. That's totally not his fault. So I'm not gonna include that in the score. I think the dynamics were followed okay. Uh, he definitely got the general idea but when we had certain sections like that build up, I didn't really feel the build up. And I also felt like some sections didn't match. For example, the A section at the end was louder than the B section. And then let's talk about that chorale. I just feel like the approach to it was a little bit too mechanical with the metric triplets. And it kind of changed the impression that I had of his performance. I was really enjoying it. And then we got to the chorale and I was like, mm, this feels a little bit underprepared. So I think just a little bit more time on chorale roles would really make a big difference. But otherwise, I think John did a very respectable job in a live setting as well. So I'm very happy to give him an eight out of 10. Once again, let me know down in the comments below if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear from you. And if you wanna check out the original videos, they are all in the description below. And also, if you'd like to submit your own video to be featured on this segment or on the general Let's Watch segment, you can submit it at adamcampercussion.com forward slash Submit. Finally, if you haven't already, please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads. I upload content like this every single week on this channel. It's a very fun place to be. And make sure you hit that notification bell to know whenever I upload a new episode. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night. I finally stopped running now. With you I found my peace somehow. Let go of every thought that was holding me back. Yeah. I'm in love with you in every way The joy you give me every day Makes me 